What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, this is episode number 6 and we're starting today's episode off with a squad report here, uh, a reminder squad reports will be shown at the start of every single in-game calendar month as will the full league table and I'm hoping to get one squad report up per episode so you know what my aim is this season is to do one month per episode, that's quite a lot of games to fit into one month but I'm sure we'll work, in, uh, work out how to do that. Otherwise, one squad report every two months because squad reports during this series are, of course, going to be one of the most interesting things. They're going to be just as interesting as the games we play because clearly, as we have this series, it's it's all about the progression of you know young players from Spain, and of course, in a few years' time, we'll be looking at a few more experienced players and you know developing them for club and country. Hopefully, if we can take over as the Spain manager, and it's it's going to be really interesting to see how we develop this team right from the off, you know, because of course, all of these players, our good, young, high potential players, or you know, seemingly high potential players, are all on loan. So it will still be interesting to see how I develop those players for the country, and uh, maybe we will get them back for the club in years to come. But still. You saw a league table there. Um, pretty decent start. Third place so far. And we take on the fourth place side, Real Betis, so the first game of today's episode. It's been a pretty decent start. I mean, you know, I know this. You guys know this. I don't like to think of myself as a, a good FIFA player. I think of myself as quite average, to be honest. But I know that my ability on offline game modes, at least, is, is good enough to play legendary and play it well with whatever squad I'm using. So I knew that this side was not going to be down the bottom half of the table in the first season. That was never going to happen. You know, next season, and if we do hopefully touch wood uh, promote get promotion to La Liga which will be our aim we you know we'll probably will be sitting down at the bottom end of the table in the first season at least but in this season with the teams we're facing the caliber of the teams we're facing we should be able to get the wins on most occasions and as we took on Real Batiste well they are one of the sides who in this division you know will be doing very well because you look at their side it, it, it's very good there are some very decent players out there at least for a, a Segunda division level so a very decent team and the first chance would fall in the 15th minute or the first incident I should say because unfortunately for us it's uh, Moreno who gets injured and as the game carries on it's eventually stopped by the referee and we have to substitute one of our players and as Moreno gets an injury it turns out he has broken his ankle and will be out for three months which is a bit of a shame to get an injury to one of our players so early on in this series but this guy is like 30 years old and he's not really going to have too much potential if any so I'm not really that fussed about it. It gives us a chance to play younger players, fresher players as well and there you go so I'm not too fussed about his injury but he is going to be out for three months regardless and in the 34th minute here you see us get on the ball as Munir collects it rolls it through towards Buena Casa he picks out Sandro down the right hand side great chance for a two on two Sandro goes himself the goalkeeper saves it but it's turned in in the rebound by Buena Casa who makes it 1-0 so Buena Casa gets the goal he's uh, on loan from Juventus very decent striker and he's he's got off to a very good start this season in this series as well I don't know what his potential is exactly but that's his ninth goal so far in La Liga, uh, sorry in uh, Liga Adelante and that's a very good start for a uh, young striker we have on loan in the 56th minute we come through again though, Munir's on the ball and this was just an absolutely lovely goal, it really was Munir who came on for uh, Moreno, as you can see in the top left, that notification never went away he's got 4 star skills, he's a really good dribbler of the ball and it was showed there, brilliant run, it's such a shame this guy only has 38 stamina which is just absolutely outrageous because it means that we can barely ever play him at least not week in week out, but still he did make it 2-0 to Racing Santander and in the 90th minute here a good chance to make it 3-0 it's Contra who plays a brilliant for a free ball over the top towards Tunkara and this was a very very nice goal as well stops the ball turns his man and how about that for a finish this guy isn't going to have the best of stats at such a young age but even so, that was an amazing goal, it really was. The way he just stopped the ball, took his time, one little touch to the right, and what a finish that is. Absolutely majestic finish into the top corner, and it is Racing Santander 3, Real Batiste 0. So, 3 0 to us, we are going to claim the three points as we expected and get ourselves another win. And this side, you know, it doesn't really feel as low rated as it is. It already feels like I'm playing with a three star team, you know, because it's just very, very. It's just really good to play with. Like it's it's so composed when you're on the ball and, and Tunkara almost makes it a four 0 there, but it's shot in the post. It's so composed when I get on the ball with these players. I'm not sitting there thinking, oh my god, these are so low rated. I'm not going to be able to do anything with them. I feel confident. I feel like I know how to move the ball around. I feel like I know how to break down defenses, even though our side isn't actually full of pace. Like you know, most of my career mode sides are. I've got like four players in the starting eleven with you know, let's say if they had normal team card, it would be like 84, 85 pace minimum. 
in this team there's no one who's really very quick at all yet I still feel like I can break down defences even without playing my fast counter attacking style which I'm used to but uh, still uh, there was confirmation there that Moreno is going to be out for three months and we then take on Mirandes here away from home for the uh, second of three games of today's episode and they're currently sitting right down the bottom end of the table so we felt very confident our chances coming here and what I decided I'll do as well is I know I'm already going to do a minimum of three games per episode but what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate some games as well and at the end of this episode you'll see one of the games get simulated so games which aren't as massive for us aren't as important of course all games are important but not as important as some I'm probably going to go ahead and simulate them so we won't do too many simulations in this season or in this series at all really but uh, for this season maybe like one two games a month we'll get simulated just so we can speed this up a little bit otherwise you know we, we could be here for a long long time playing with players who you know they may be good for the future but aren't that good right now but still the first chance of this game would fall in the fifth minute here and the first goal, the first goal was scored as well Sandro got it it was a very nice ball into the box there and a very good header by our striker as well on loan from Barcelona so Mirandes nil harassing Santander won five minutes in and just the absolute perfect start really really nice free kick whipped in Sandro peels off his man and the goalkeeper I don't know where on earth he's diving but it's not towards the ball and it's 1-0 to Racing Santander and in the 8th minute uh, they come through here pretty much directly from kickoff it was uh, Vera who won him, uh, won him a penalty and I have to say all I can say is I'm lucky that I didn't get Carlos Blanco sent off because that was just a diabolical piece of defending by me and I just pulled him to the, pulled him to the ground he was the last man and it was from behind I would have given a red card to my defender there but thankfully the referee didn't see it that way so Good chance for Mirandes to equalise right from the spot as they win themselves a penalty. And it's a really good opportunity to level the score here. Raul Fernandes, who's our captain at this side, is going to try and stop it. So good chance here from the penalty spot. 12 yards out. Can they equalise here? Pablo against Fernandes. Fernandes is trying to put him off in the goal with some of those comical animations you can do now. Pablo strikes it. And Fernandez goes the right way and saves it. So that's the second penalty save from our goalkeeper in just a few games. And he, he keeps the score at 1 0. And in the 43rd minute, here we play out from the back. It's Quinty, our left back, who's on the ball. Plays it inside towards his man. Buena Casa plays a quick 1 2 of Alvaro, who was already looking very good. He had one assist and he gets another assist here as he crosses the ball in after riding a slide challenge. Picks out Sanjo and it's the same result. So this guy capitalizing and playing in this game in, in, uh, in place of uh, Moreno, who's of course now injured but got two assists in this game and both of the assists came for Sandro who scored two headers so a bit of a repetition there and it is 2-0 to Racing Santander and in the 70th minute we come through again Buena Casa plays it in towards, uh, towards Sandro Sandro takes on the last man beats him with the drag back goes inside can he get his hat trick unfortunately not because the shot goes harmlessly wide and out for a goal kick so still Mirandes nil Racing Santander 2 and in the 87th minute we're through again here on the break it's uh, Italo's finding Sandro Sandro holds it up gives it towards Tunkara. Nice build up here and we just work our way inside. Our tiles towards his man. He dummies. He shoots and scores and makes it Mirandes nil. Racing Santander free. So 3 nil up in this game with just a couple minutes to go. Very, very nice counter attack and as I said in the first game, I'm not really playing a counter attack in start of football with this team but even though they have low pace, they can still do it. And it is our tiles who, funny enough, I talk about this team having low pace. This is the guy I got on loan from Las Palmas. The reason I picked him up is because he's actually really rapid. So Okay, maybe the rest of the team that have too much pace, but he does. But uh, still, 3-0 the final score. The home, uh, sorry, the away fans can go home. Very happy with that result. And yeah, we keep on making very good progression. That's another three points picked up. Another win under our belts. And it, it's looking good. I'm really liking the start of this series and the start of this season. When I started this series in episode one, episode two, I was thinking to myself, I, I'm probably going to get bored playing some of these games, but I'm actually having a lot of fun. Obviously, mainly because we're winning, but it's just kind of fun to actually test yourself against these low teams with a low side yourself because it's, it's different like when you play career mode and you know when you guys watch my career modes you know that most of the teams we manage are high rated you know and and you know if they're not high rated from the beginning they get high rated very very quickly and we're always in the top divisions you know we're always in the Premier League or the Bundesliga or uh, Liga BBVA but playing in the uh, Segunda division with a very low rated side against, you know, against very low rated sides themselves, it, it's fun. It, it's like a different style of FIFA. It's not really fast, action packed, best players in the world performing five star skills and just, you know, whipping in fantastic crosses and, and 40 yard goals from out of nowhere. This is more sort of tactical based and, you know, technical based, passing the ball around. It's a really fun challenge. It is quite frustrating at times, but still quite fun to play. But we took on Albacete for the third game of today's episode, and the first chance fell here 
as uh, they failed to get the corner away. It came to Derek, and um, well, the, the less shot, the less said about that shot, the better. And in the 29th minute, Albert said they come through themselves. He has poured two on the ball. Who goes down the left hand side, plays it towards uh, Paul, the number three back, back uh, number three left back, crosses the ball in. Israel wins the header, and that was a free header there, and he should have scored. But it was a really poor game in the end. It finished as a nil-nil draw. The final uh, chance fell here in the 78th minute, but the shot by Cruz was saved, but the offside flag was up anyway. And it was such a poor game, very, very poor. And I said it was fun sometimes, but it's just the unpredictability of this division, and that's the that's the fun thing about it. You know, you never know what game you're going to get. I thought I was going to win this game quite comfortably, three or four nil. And so it was a tight nil-nil, but not too much action to show you, I'm afraid. But the final game was indeed simulated. It was against Girona. We won it by two goals to nil. And um, yeah, this is just to speed things up a little bit and get through the season a bit quicker than usual. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Club and Country, then please do leave a like because it is much appreciated. And of course, it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.